Hey guys, it's me. I'm back. Um, and I'm back in the park today because I really liked how it was the last few videos when I was here. Uh, today I want to talk to you guys about 10 things you need in your suitcase when you go study abroad. Let's get into it. Number one, really simple, is a variety of clothing. I know that this might sound like, of course, Billy, of course I'm gonna pack a variety. But are you? Because I failed a little bit, not gonna lie. I did okay, but I could have done better. You wanna make sure that you're packing basic clothing, like t-shirts and things, things that don't really have graphic designs on them, just like basic color tees, because you're gonna be wearing that a lot. You're living out of a suitcase essentially for like four to six months. You really think that you, you can pack that well? Probably not. Pack basic clothing. This has to do with when you study abroad, um, but make sure you're packing seasonally. Like in Italy, I did not really pack that many things for the winter time. I'm living in December, so it's 50s here. Um, you don't need like crazy snow gear because it doesn't really do that here. But I wish I would have packed a little more of my heavy clothes rather than just my my fall clothing. Just make sure you're packing enough variety. You're not just packing the same things and you're not packing things that are gonna stand out too much as much as you wanna pack your standout clothing. You also don't want people to recognize that you're wearing the same thing the next week. Number two is flip-flops. I know this sounds like it just goes along with regular clothing, but it doesn't because some people don't bring flip-flops like some people didn't bring flip-flops here. Make sure you're packing flip-flops because if you're studying abroad, you probably are on a budget and you're gonna be staying in hostels. In hostels, flip-flops are shower shoes because you are sharing a shower with a bunch of other people if it's storm style. You're not going in there barefoot. That's not happening. And you don't wanna be one of the people that has to ask to borrow someone else's shower shoes. Make sure you're packing a pair of flip-flops. Number three is really important. I cannot stress this enough. Copies of your passport. Like you don't wanna bring your passport around the country that you're living in. It's just asking to get it stolen. You wanna bring like a copy of it in like your wallet or something, just in case, especially because you get your permit to stay, like we had to get ours. I believe we had to use one copy for our permit to stay as well. You don't wanna be carrying around your actual passport but you want to make sure that you have something where if you get stopped by the police, you can be like, here's a copy. If you want to see my real one, follow me back to my apartment. Number four might sound common sense, but it's not as common sense as you think. A converter. And not only just a converter. You want one that's going to work different places. If you don't know exactly where you're traveling, you want to make sure that you have like different attachments in case you go somewhere that has a different plug that you can make sure that you're being able to charge your electronics, your phone. Number five is a portable charger. You are on the move a lot when you study abroad. You're probably traveling a lot. I know I do and have. You don't know exactly when you're going to get into the next place. You don't know if the Airbnb is gonna let you check in at three or at six or when they're going to let you check in or your hostel, you don't know if the bus is gonna have an outlet, you don't know if the plane's gonna have an outlet. So you wanna make sure you have that portable charger in case your phone's running low and you need to charge it, you don't know when the next time you're gonna get to charge it is. Along those same lines are things to do while you travel. So that could be books, um, make sure you download podcasts. I got really into podcasts while, while I was here because um, like they're just nice to listen to while you're on like a plane, it's kinda like a TV show. Um, if you have Netflix and you want to download a show or something, you just want to be able to occupy yourself because a lot of your trip is going to be on transportation and traveling. You're not always going to be in the location as much as it looks like that on Instagram or wherever you're seeing people um, who study abroad. They're not showing you the 12-hour bus ride to Germany. And going along with that is number seven, cards. Um, so that could be just like regular playing cards, or I have Uno. I know it sounds like I'm 12. But you know what? 
when I don't bring them on trips here, people are like, oh, why didn't you bring Uno? We could have played, da 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 da. So people like it. It's simple. It's something that you can do while maybe you're drinking some wine. Cards, and especially Uno, I can't even tell you how many times we played Uno here. More than I've played with my actual playing cards. So that's something to occupy yourself and to do with friends, especially if you're traveling and it's a rainy day um, and you have time. We stayed in one day and just kind of played cards and chilled because we felt like going out in the rain wasn't really what we wanted to do that day. All right, number eight, medication. So this could be Advil, Excedrin, Neosporin, uh, like anything that you use on a regular basis, um, you're gonna wanna bring. I have Advil, I have a whole case full of all of my things because I wanna be prepared for everything. Um, Advil, Excedrin, Neosporin, Pepto, um, Things because you're traveling and you don't want to be sick while you travel. You don't want to have a headache. You don't want to have a stomach ache. If you can ensure that you don't, if you can stop that, um, especially because other people don't always have it. I've given away a lot of Advil um, because if people don't have it, you want to be able to make sure that their trip is going just as well as yours. This is also important because the country that you're in might not have that same brand or that same like. Um, formula of it. Um, so like I brought Dramamine for my motion sickness, but I went to the pharmacy to get more. Of course they didn't have Dramamine, they had something else. Um, so it's important to also keep that packaging. And especially if you don't speak the language, you can bring that packaging with you to the pharmacy and they can help figure out what it is in their country. Number nine, school supplies. Yes, we do actually go to school here. It's not just traveling. I do have classes. I go to classes four days a week. It's not like I'm just traveling every day. I just don't really show that on like Instagram or on Facebook that I am going to classes. It doesn't have to be everything that you normally bring to college. I have like a, a three, um, I have a sectioned notebook, so I use that for every class. I don't always take notes in paper, but some professors prefer that you use paper over a laptop, um, especially if you are doing an on-site class, like I have an art class that we go and we visit different places, I'm not carrying my laptop around there. Um, so make sure you bring a notebook, a lot of pens because you lose pens like crazy and you don't realize it until you're abroad. Um, and I would bring also index cards or flashcards just because things can be expensive here, especially if um, you don't exactly know where to go. There's a place right by our college that sells school supplies. It was like a tiny little stack of index cards was like five euro. And I was like, excuse me, not paying that. Just so make sure you're bringing what you think you'll need while you actually go to class because Believe it or not, you're actually going to classes. And number 10 is a water bottle. And by this I mean a reusable water bottle, like a swell bottle, mine's like a knockoff swell bottle. Um, and that's because, especially here in Rome, all the fountains are drinkable. So you don't really pay for water, and if you do, you're like out at dinner and you're paying just as much for water as you are for wine. So you wanna make sure that you're staying hydrated, you're bringing a reusable water bottle, especially because in Europe it's a lot less common to use uh, plastics that are one use. Um, so you just wanna make sure that you're being conscious and make sure you stay hydrated because then you're gonna have a better trip. And I have one final bonus tip. I know I said 10, but I'm giving you 11 tips, and this is about packing. Make sure your carry-on, you're making the most of it, okay? So that means making it the size count, and making sure you're putting enough in the carry-on in case your checked luggage gets lost, that you have clothes for a few days, at least until you can purchase more or they find your bag. Make sure you're rolling things. I didn't. My God, I wish I did. But, um, Make sure you're packing properly. Make sure you're using your carry-on. All right, you guys, those were my tips for your packing for studying abroad. Um, make sure that you leave comments down below if you have any other things that you would recommend. 
um, and have a wonderful day. Ciao.